warrant on the back side of the desert here in Dolan Springs that, uh, hey, I like being where I'm at. Amen. 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 We're glad you're here. You have a good week. Yeah. <laughs> anybody? Anybody have yes. a good week? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> This is but one of those, uh, that's mine. Okay. I wasn't sure. One of those weeks that was, an uh, unusual week. Again, bat uh, battling the heat. Uh, battling just being alive sometimes. Um, my cooler hasn't been uh, reacting like it should. It getting old, just like me, I guess. <laughs> Uh, had an encounter that sort of made the message more real this morning, and I thought it was really great the way that uh, the first song that Robert sang opened my eyes. And sometimes we get uh, walking through life and we just stumble along. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We stumble here, we stumble there, we stumble everywhere we go. Um, this is about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, it's Friday night. And I don't know if I was dreaming or something. It sounded like somebody knocked on the side of the trailer when we did that. And I thought, who in the world would be doing that? And uh, I knew it had to be late. And I sat up in bed and I smelled smoke. I thought, oh my goodness. And uh, I got up and went and looked out the window and didn't see anything. And uh, went into the living room, didn't see anything. Went out on the front porch, didn't see anything, looked out. Uh, I stood at the window that has the screen open, didn't uh, smell any, anything smoking, like I thought. Then I, I went to the back door of the trailer that normally don't ever use, and I opened the door, uh, and I saw a full moon. Did anybody see that full moon day? It was just like it was day. <laughs> and uh, coming from back east, you don't see full moons very seldom. If you do, for just a few minutes of the time because of the... Uh, clouds that overhang everything. But it was worth it to be woken up uh, to see that full moon. To see God in all his creation, and I've always said this over all the years, uh, in Dolan Springs, uh, when you don't have the smog from Vegas or Los Angeles or whoever, uh, you can see forever, and the uh, stars in the skies, I don't see them like I used to, but it's like we live in another world. You don't see this in a big portion of the United States. But saying all that, I thought about uh, my own personal being. Uh, my message is, open my eyes, Lord, and I got at the top of my page, which you don't have on yours because you didn't copy coming to your senses. So we're going to talk about five senses today. And uh, anybody tell me off the top of your head, what are the five physical senses that you have? Sight. Okay. Sight. Taste. Audio, Touch. hearing. Smell. Smelling. Taste. Tasting. Touching. 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 And touching. And humor. Well, that's not one of them, but uh, as I looked at up, I found out there could be as high as 11, what they call senses. And of course, of course I'm not going into it today, but some of it is ex sensory perception. And they, uh, I was thinking about uh, Eld's dog down there. And the dogs, animals, have a different set of hearing. They can see things and see things that we can't see. But nevertheless, uh, we're going to go into that realm of open my eyes. Thinking that, I thought, you know, three of those faculties are not working real good at my older age. I don't see real well. My hearing, uh, especially my wife, I can't hear my wife. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. <laughs> selective hearing. That's, that's selective called. hearing. Yes. Uh, no, and, uh, the last couple of years, the tips of my fingers, I don't feel them very well. So that's three out of five. Nevertheless, uh, hopefully when we leave here today, we'll have a little bit more insight of what God wants us to know from the senses that he has given us. Would you ask the Lord's blessing for them? 
Father, we thank you for the privilege of speaking your word. Open our eyes that we might see. Open our ears that we might hear. Oh, Lord, help us to be able to smell the good things that are around us as well as the bad. And Lord, teach us, oh God, to uh, taste life in its fullness in every way in your word. And oh Lord, help us to be like the woman with the issue of blood. If I could only touch the hem of your garment. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I chose a scripture over in the, uh, one of the most famous Psalms, uh, Psalms 118. Uh, well, it's a longer psalm, but it's also one of the most famous. And I like to read from verses 9 through 19. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed there according to your word. With my whole heart I sought thee. O let me not wonder from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, o Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all the riches. I will meditate in thy precepts. I have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with me, servant, thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Verse 18, open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. I couldn't have a reading as I was reading that verse and selecting it. Uh, even though there's uh, 8 billion plus or around 8 billion people in the world today, every once in a while I feel like I'm a stranger. Uh, I can be in a shopping mall or in a crowd of people and uh, I think nobody here knows me. Uh, I don't know anybody. Uh, especially true coming back uh, to uh, Arizona after being gone for 38 years, uh, living in Kingdom over 20 years in the past. Uh, I keep thinking that I'm going to run into somebody. But so far, they're, they're hid from me. I don't know what happened to them. But God has endowed us with at least five physical senses. And I've got a definition there. The external stimulus or perception of smell. Thank you, Robert. God bless you. Hearing, taste, touch, and sight. Now, the first one is really smelly. Aren't you glad you can still smell? Uh, one of the things I miss, and you can't blame me for missing it, but for years and years uh, in my house back east, uh, I had a front porch that I didn't have clean, uh, cleared out real good, or closed up real good. And it's the only place you could get into the uh, basement until I fixed it. But every year when it started getting cold, I'd have skunk trouble. Even though Oil City has, at one time, had 22,000 people, the skunk still visits. Now, anybody have any skunks in your life? Uh, but aren't you glad you can smell the pungent odor of Mexican food or steaks on the grill? Or I can say this now that I'm old, but I love the perfumes that women wear. And you then said, okay, that just passed right over your head. <laughs> Ladies, keep on wearing your perfume. I love it. But... Philippians 4.18, uh, Paul is basically closing his letter to them. He talks about uh, the gift that uh, Epaphroditus uh, sent him as a gift. He said it was a sweet-smelling odor to him. It was just something that he really appreciated. It, it's, it smelled good. Even though you couldn't smell it, it still smelled good. And... Uh, over in the book of uh, Genesis, the 8th chapter, the 21st verse, and I'd like to uh, just read that verse, if you don't mind, because 
I think it's unusual. It's the first time that it's mentioned about smell. Uh, and the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Now, best I can understand, this is because one man pleased God. No. He built an ark. Some say that it took him 120 years to build it. Uh, uh, it had not rained as far as we could tell at that time on the earth. But uh, Noah built the ark anyway. And God blessed him. And God uh, was glad that uh, somebody was paying attention. I, I just asked the question today in the hustle and the bustle of the world today. Do you think uh, anybody's paying attention to what's happening in the world? Couldn't help but think as I look at the news, and I've got to where that uh, soon I don't look at the news as much as we used to because all the news is the bad news and how bad our president's done and how bad the course, what do you call it, is doing. And uh, there's no good news, really, is it? So I just rather not have any news. But nevertheless, uh, when you think about it, uh, the Bible mentions a lot of things that you can smell, and I just used from the Bible uh, help books. You can smell uh, the battle. Uh, people that have been there and done that said that you could smell the death as it lingers over the battlefield. You can s smell uh, the garments of people. Uh, you can always tell certain people uh, where they've been, what they've done because of the smell that's on their garment. Uh, you could go on, uh, we mentioned mirror. Um, I don't know if they do it as much as they used to, but uh, used to you go in houses and they would have the candles burning and that was the incense that they made their house smell good. Uh, I don't know if we, we don't, do we still do that anymore? Some people do. Uh, I know we've got a bunch of uh, candles back east that have never gotten lit. So maybe uh, if we ever go back there, we'll light them again. So nevertheless, you can smell them. You can smell the fire. I don't know about you, but I like the uh, smell of a, of a campfire. Uh, I like the smell of a fireplace. Uh, I like uh, a lot of things that have to do with being able to not just smell, but to see as well. Uh, you can smell, and it talks about you can uh, smell that of a sun. You could smell your children, how they differ in the way that they smell. First Corinthians, the 12th chapter, uh, and I think that, uh, 17, 18, uh, Paul talks about the importance of hearing, uh, of smelling, um, as one of the gifts that God has given to us in life. Uh, what, would, what would we have if we weren't able to smell something? Uh, some people, and my wife is one of them, evidently has, she can smell all the bad things, all the bad, and I can't smell, did you smell that? No, I didn't smell that. <laughs> I guess that's good, but I'm glad I don't smell as good as, um, um, I just said that, I'm glad I don't smell as good as you do. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Let's go in for something that's not as smelly as that, okay? But. Aren't you glad that God can smell our good works? Amen. That was the spiritual intent of that. But hearing, Genesis 3, 8. First time that Jews then to hear the voice of the Lord. I don't know about you, but uh, I think about the first time that I heard the voice of my firstborn son and my daughters. First time I heard them cry. Uh, first time that I heard the first words that they spoke, uh, it, it meant something to, to be able to hear it, to, to hear the sounds of life itself. Uh, life would be a pretty boring place uh, if you couldn't hear. And yet there are a lot of people that are hearing impaired. Uh, thank God for your hearing, amen? Yeah. Thank God that you can, that they've got audio systems that you can buy as high as $5,000 or more 
that can make you make you hear better. Um, I don't know if you've ever had the problem, but sometimes I can hear too well. Uh, I don't need to hear some things. Uh, I wish I could forget some of the things that I have heard. <laughs> but uh, what was so amazing when we were raising their children, our kids would usually think that they couldn't be heard, but uh, we sort of felt like God because we could hear what they were saying and doing. And uh, they never understood that uh, that register that allowed the heat and the cooling to come in could also bring sound into the living room while they were back in the bedrooms. But nevertheless, to hear the voice of God, uh, the, the sound to be aware of in our ears, the Bible talks a whole lot about hearing. Uh, I'm just going to use a couple of scriptures uh, to the Bay Decision Church and to all the churches. Uh, basically, if any man hear my voice, uh, God is always tr trying to get people to hear his voice. My wife usually says something that is unique. Uh, if God has to speak real loudly, then something probably very terrible is going to happen. Because usually it's what we found on the mountain when Elijah was trying to hear the voice of God. It wasn't in, in the thunder. It wasn't in the lightning. It was in the still small voice. But sometimes as we look in the world today, we hear the clanging of cymbals and we hear a lot of men's voices. We hear the trumpet blowing, but no pure sounds. God help us to hear pure sounds. And um, Revelation 22, 17, uh, if you don't mind, let me read that because I sort of think that some of these days we're gonna be able to be a part of that uh, last sound, if you don't mind. Uh, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. God is wanting everybody everywhere to hear the, the sound of the gospel. He told his disciples, Go into all the world and preach or teach the gospel to every nation. And he says, Whosoever will, let him come. And this, as far as I can tell, is one of the last times that God sends that call out. Uh, whoever has our ears, let him hear. Uh, Jesus said over and over in the Gospels, and I only put one reference down, Luke 11, 15, whosoever has ears. Anybody has ears? Uh, in a couple of occasions in my lifetime, I've seen people that have had their ears uh, torn off or injured real bad and uh, we sometimes look at a person and we say they got big ears, little ears, elephant ears. I don't know what kind of ears I got, but uh, aren't you glad you got ears? But aren't you glad your ears work? Uh, thankful that we can still hear with our hearing. And it's a twofold sound. It's not just the audio, but it's how that God can speak through people a message that will go to our spirit man. And then we go to the next one along the list uh, called taste. I don't know about you, but I like to taste good things. Very few things that I don't like. Uh, the Bible does say, taste not, ta uh, touch not that unclean thing, but uh, one of the first things that I remember as a kid, of liking to taste certain things. I don't know if you've ever did it, but down in South Texas where I grew up with, they used to have salt licks. Now raise your hand, be honest, nobody's looking except us. Did you ever go lick that salt lick? Tastes the salt is good. <laughs> you ever tasted the salt licks of the cows? Where they, they had salt, they put... I'm not getting that. You're not getting the salt? Okay. Well, that's... They have places they just put big chunks of salt for the cows. Oh, okay. For the cows. And as a kid, I'd go lick it just to taste, see what it was. <laughs> so... <laughs> but we, uh, we like to taste strange, strange things. We always told our kids to try to taste it, see if you like it, you know? Because... That's the way you learned uh, whether you 
like steak? Anybody like steak here? Or like chicken? I got my eaten all day and she didn't give me permission, but I opened the box. She brings home leftovers. And there was a piece of pork chop breaded, and boy was it good because I hadn't eaten for four or five hours. But I don't like liver. I don't like liver. Mm. I don't like Brussels sprouts. Mm. What? What's wrong with you? Yeah. All the stuff good for you. That's all I right, like most things, Al. Uh, just about everything. Uh, I probably, I'm going to say this, and uh, please don't think anything about what I say. It's probably a good thing that I didn't develop a taste for beer or liquor, because I would have probably, my wife calls me Rudy Excess Rhymer. Uh, if something tastes good, I like it, and uh, I can, just like yesterday, I drink uh, probably a good half gallon of pop. Uh, just because I like the taste of it, it was cold, and it really tasted good. Psalms 119, verse 103, how sweeter by words to my taste. Sometimes uh, the boundaries of our senses go to something to express something else in, talk, in our spirit, but uh, the Bible says it's to hold fast the form of sound words. Uh, have you ever heard something that really sounded good to you? Uh, you got a job. Or maybe somebody asked you to be their wife. Or the woman said, yes, my wife said to me. I, I remember the time of the day. I remember where it was. I'd taken her way out of the boonies. And we were going up and down these things, exploring the little gullies and everything. And she was coming down. And I told her how beautiful she was. And I asked her if she would marry me. That was a long time ago, but thank you, Mrs. Reimer, for being my wife. It tasted good. Psalms 38, or 34, verse 8, taste and see the Lord is good. Try it, you might like it. I've known a lot of Christians in my life, but I've never known a person that was Christian say they were sorry that they became a Christian. Never known one. I've known some sorry Christians. You hear any sorry Christians? Mm -hmm. But I've, I've never known any that uh, were sorry they were a Christian. They were glad that they had believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we forget. Uh, you can read in Hebrews, uh, in the sixth chapter, the 14th to the 10th verse. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sometimes we, we get carried away with. Uh, Thinking of what God wants us. The fourth chapter, the sixth. Let me, can I read that? I, I like what it says because it's so much. I can find it anyway. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, that they should fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them which is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and burrs is rejected, and is nigh unto the cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, and I like this, and this is what I really like, even though it starts on a bad turn, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. And, and I thought about this. You need to remember this is a, one of those promises. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward the name his name in that you admitted to the saints and do minister. Jesus said, inasmuch as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Over a lifetime, aren't you glad you went that extra mile? Uh, aren't you glad that you gave that club to somebody, that you helped that person out? Uh, 
I look back and I think about all the opportunities, not only that I've had to, to share with others, but can I say this? Uh, how many times over and over that people have come to my wife and I, to our family, and blessed us. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, we have uh, one of those things in uh, our church, wherever we go, uh, that is sort of a, a tradition, a habit, we call it the Pentecostal handshake. Anybody know what that is? You go up and shake hands, God bless you, brother, and when you shake hands, when your hands open up like that, you leave them. $20 bill, and I've had a $100 bill left in my hand, and praise the Lord, uh, it was good, amen. But in the same way, aren't you glad uh, that you can do it the right way to the right people? <clears throat> my wife and I one time felt like we should help a couple in our church. They were young, married, had a little baby, and uh, they were having financial difficulties, and we had a little bit extra money, and. We both prayed about it, and we felt like we should give them a amount of, certain amount of money. And we went close to the time that we were going to write out a check, and we both felt like that it was it was the wrong amount. So we prayed about it, and this sounds real strange. Uh, the Lord told us to give them a different amount, which was lower than what we intended to give. <clears throat> but we wrote it out, and we gave it to them, and... Uh, Melody was the girl's name. It's been 40 or 50 years since then. But uh, she started crying. She says, I was praying that God would give it the exact amount. And we listened and we gave the exact amount. Amen. Aren't you glad that God can uh, cause things like that to happen? Because he knows our hearts and he knows our needs. He says, I'll supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. You think about it. Uh, uh, Hebrews 2, 1 through 3, the Lord is gracious. You can read that, but it's talked about how that we make a sweet smelling odor of our sacrifice of praise to the Lord. Sometimes just by yourself, just start praising the Lord. Uh, the Bible tells us in a couple of places that God inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, I've faced a number of uh, physical problems in my life that could have been fatal. And um, I, like Hezekiah, was reading the 37th chapter of Isaiah. And uh, Hezekiah, as, as he turned his face to the wall, he says, the Lord, the, the dead cannot praise you. And so I doubled up on my praises. Because uh, even though I was prepared to die, I was not ready to die. I started praising the Lord. Lord, uh, the dead cannot praise you. I still do it today. The dead cannot praise you. Now you say, Pastor Ryan, aren't you ready? I'm prepared, but I'm not ready. I want to see more. Uh, I know that this sounds atrocious, but I want to see my children's children's children up to the fourth generation, to my great-great-great-grandchildren. Anybody know how far I want to look into the future? Well, my youngest great-granddaughter is, uh, my oldest great-granddaughter is, what, seven or nine, uh, Lily? Anyway, uh, got a few more years, uh, but I'm still alive. Blessed is the man that is in the land of the living that walks with the Lord, and I'm trying to be a blessing. Aren't you glad God can walk with you all the days of your life? Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, he's the one that gives you the joy of living. And aren't you glad you have the joy to, live, uh, to be alive this morning? Okay. Let me go on. Any ever, anybody ever been accused of being touched in the head? <laughs> well, that's not what this is about. But uh, uh, <coughs> I got touching Jesus. Contacts, close point, quick, quick. Proximity effect. <coughs> Kinds of touches, unclean, angelic, queenly touches, divine cleansing, healing touches, sexual satanic touches. Uh, Luke 6, 14. This is the multitude sought to touch him. And Jesus was going about doing good. And uh, guess what? Uh, God 
God wants to be touched. You think about it in Luke 8, 43 through 48, uh, Jesus was walking along and he was being jostled by, but he was in a crowd. But he said, somebody touched me. Who touched me? Aren't you glad that he's able to perceive what we touch him? Uh, as you read the Gospels, one of the, I'd say one of the glaring truths, if we look at it, uh, Jesus said over and over to people, he says, your faith has made you whole. Go your way, because you be as you have believed, so be it unto you. Faith always touches God. Faith moves the hand of God. Uh, aren't you glad that God has given us a measure of faith? And God gave us the ability to increase our faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He said, who touched me? We think about it, uh, the woman in the well, or the woman uh, that had the issue of blood, she says, if I can only just touch the hem of his garment. Touch the hem of his garment. I've got the scriptures there of Hebrews 4, 13 through 16. And it tells us, if you'll read it, Jesus can be touched with the fittings of our infirmities, but because he, just like us, has had problems in the flesh, and he understands what's happening. I'm glad that I have such a Savior, that he knows exactly how I feel. Um, you say, well, Jesus was the Son of God. Yeah, but in his humanity, he had every feeling that you ever had in all points. So he can be moved or touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Sometimes um, we, under we need to understand that God sees our infirmities. Anybody here got any infirmities? What is infirmities? Weaknesses? Problems? No, it wouldn't be nice if you could just click your fingers and it'd all be gone. It doesn't work that way, but we can, we can still touch Jesus. How many know that you can touch Jesus? Okay, getting down to the last one, sight. Now, I might linger on this one as I close probably too much. The ability to see, observe, aware of light, color, movement. Uh, you probably heard me say it, but I've had 27 eye surgeries. I've had uh, two cardio transplants. Uh, I've had cataract surgery, uh, lens implants, reattachments, uh, torn retina. Going down the list, uh, and uh, four or five years ago, I can't remember how many now, uh, my lens on my left eye, the eye that I can see in, uh, came loose and they could not reattach it. So I don't have a lens in my left eye, but I can see pretty well out of my left eye. Now my right eye, I, I could do like that, I can see movement, but God is still able to restore. Yeah. But thank God I can see what I can see. Now, I don't have the depth perception that I would like to have. Uh, I stumble, I run into things, I reach for something and miss it. <laughs> uh, sort of frustrating every once in a while, but thank God I can still see. Uh, it's one of those things, when you look at people that are blind, you wonder how in the world they are able to accomplish what they do. For, for just a few weeks during this time of the surgeries that I've had, I have, I have had the feeling of being blind. And uh, my wife and my son and my niece, a number of people in the church can tell you what it was like to take old Rudy around from place to place. I would put my hand on their shoulder and they would lead me. <laughs> and it's not a good feeling. Uh, so I was so thankful when I could finally get sight to see. So I, I say this every morning when I get up, I stumble to the window and I look out and I've told you before, I see Mount Tipton, the shadow of it, the sun coming over. I say, thank you, Lord, for sight. Thank you, Lord, for being able to see. Now, the other four that we've mentioned, they're important, I would think, but I don't know what I would do. Well, I trust the Lord, I guess, if I couldn't see. But let me go down to it. Uh, sometimes it's sight is being able to understand something. Uh, remember, Jesus prayed for us. One person in the market, you got the reference there. And the guy, he asked him if he could see. He says, I see men as trees walking. 
Well, Jesus prayed for him again and touched him again. Uh, and then some of the things the Greeks in John, the 12th chapter, the 21st verse, they came to the disciples and they said, Sir, we would see Jesus. When you come to church, I hope you don't come just to uh, see somebody. Uh, I hope you don't come just because there's food. I hope you don't come just because it's a thing to do. I hope that when you come to this church or any church, that you see Jesus. That you see Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, we would see Jesus. Uh, the writer of Hebrews, some believe it to be Paul, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Sometimes we forget that all through life's journey, once we've come to Jesus and we've experienced his pres presence and blessings in our life, no matter what we're going to, uh, can I say he's our source? He's our resource. Uh, he's our everything. Um, I, I thought about this as I was closing this part of the message down in the I thought, Lord, when you see me coming, I hope that it's not coming with my hands out trying to get something, but it's my hands folded together praising you, worshiping you. Uh, I want to, to enter the presence of God with thanksgiving and with praise and adoration because uh, God wants the praises of my heart. He says, he says, I know what you have need of before you even ask. But then he says, ask that your joy might be full. But aren't you glad that you could come thankful to the presence in the throne room of God, first and foremost of all? Uh, I, I put this down because uh, Stephen, in the seventh chapter of Acts, he was being stoned. You know, he wasn't even a preacher. He was... He was one of those big people that waited on the Lord, but he got filled with the Holy Spirit. And he started preaching and teaching everybody. The, the religious people got upset about it. Uh, can I say this? You don't want to say anything bad about anybody else. But more often than not, that when God does something in a Christian's life, uh, too often other Christians comment says, oh no, God didn't really do that. But I know whom I have believed. And over and over again in my life, I know it was the Lord who touched me. Jesus said, who touched me? And I'll say, Lord, you touched me. You touched my finances. Well, that check was coming to you anyway. Well, it wasn't coming when I expected it. You ever got a check like that in the mail? Uh, have you had somebody come to your door and says, we don't have need of this anymore. We just felt like maybe you'd like it. Mm -hmm. This is a song that uh, we sing, touching Jesus, that's all that really matters. Aren't you glad that uh, that's what it's all about? Looking into Jesus, the origin of faith, our faith. But here was Stephen, uh, in the prime of his life, and uh, they were stoning him. He says, Father, forgive them, they know what they're do doing. They don't know what they're doing. But then he made this statement, I, he says, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Uh, about 33 years ago, in November, uh, I had my first major surgery, back surgery. Uh, I had been knocked cuckoo a couple of times on the football field and the boxing matches and everything, more than I don't remember hitting the ground. But I'd never been put under. And I didn't know what to expect. And uh, I, I, I wasn't fearful, but I was fearful. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, and here I was, went through a major surgery. Uh, they did a bunch to my, what do you call that, big nerve that goes down your back. Nevertheless, the uh, Next thing I know, it was dark and everything, and I heard somebody says, Mr. Mr. Reimer. And I said, oh boy, my heart jumped inside of me because the only person I knew that was Mr. Reimer was my dad. I said, Mr. Reimer, 
Rufus. They don't call me Rufus either. I said, well, I'm dead. My heart did, but then I, I thought, well, I guess this is it. <laughs> Jesus. But some of these days, I'm going to close my eyes. The Lord tarries. He doesn't come in the clouds of glory. And I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to see Jesus. In conclusion, Mark 13, 26, Jesus said, you're going to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and great glory. In Hebrews, the fifth chapter, the 14th verse, it talks about having our senses exercised by strong men. Sometimes a message like this doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you realize that everything that you have, anything to perceive like itself comes through basically our five senses. We might not always acknowledge that it's our hearing that's not working right or our smelling that's not working right or if maybe all of it's working right but we're not uh, comprehending. Uh, have you ever had anybody come up and tell you, maybe some, somebody's trying to tell you something. Anybody ever had that come up to you? Uh, maybe God's trying to tell you something this morning through this message. Uh, what is it you're missing? Sometimes uh, I think of the people that are sending spaceships up into the air and they send one to Mars and they're sending up to the uh, spaceship and everything. Uh, if they miss by a uh, minutest little bit, they can miss it by hundreds of miles and take it over there. But sometimes God wants us to make adjustments in life, to do the right thing or to change our way and our perspective of how we look at life. Uh, one of the main things that I've heard over and over as a Christian uh, among other Christian ministers and people, and, and I close with this this morning, Don't let your love for Jesus go cold. Over in the chapter where we, uh, the third chapter of Je uh, Revelation, Jesus said, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. How do you left your per first love? Uh, the, the word in the Greek means that you turned away from the first love. You're not looking at the first love anymore. Uh, I think back over the years and we get used to things but sometimes we need to look back to the place where we had our first love for the Lord we, we had a joy, we had an excitement and you see this is a thing sometimes that is missing as a Christian is God is alive, God is real God is a part of who you are and he wants to touch your life even today Open my eyes, Lord, that I might see where I'm at spiritually. Open my eyes that I might see, as the men of Issachar did, the times in which they lived, and they might, might understand what to do. What is it God wants you to see and to know today? Let God speak to you through his word and through the things around you. In Jesus' name, you receive it this morning. Amen. Father God, we ask you to bless your people. Bless each of us so God is... We use those things in our life that you've given us to recognize life itself so that, oh God, that we can understand not only the times in which we live in, but we can see ourselves as a mirror, Lord, and help us, oh God, to perceive where we're at and that once again we might bind ourselves with strong cards of love to love in Jesus with all our heart and all our mind and our strength. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you have need of prayer, we're going to sing a song.